Hi my YouTube family. How are you? I am completely swamped and it's all wonderful. I love it. I think I thrive under pressure and stress, but um, well maybe not stress, but at least some pressure. I um, have a few announcements to make. If you don't want to stick around for the announcements and you just want to get straight to the tutorial, you can click uh, the time right here and it'll take you right to it. And for the rest of you who would like to stick around and chat a little bit, I have a couple announcements I would like to talk about. In one month, a little less than one month, on May 31st, June 1st, and June 2nd, I have a huge event um, that I am attending. It's called Summer Fair Cincinnati. It is here in my hometown, Cincinnati, Ohio. And it is a um, long-running, one of the longest in the country, uh, fine arts and crafts fairs. So um, I am honored to be chosen and to be part of it and I'm really excited. I am a little nervous uh, of course but I'm very very excited. Come out and see me if you're driving through Cincinnati or if you're you know in the area or if you're just you live in the tri-state area come on out and come say hi. Find me in my booth. That was one thing. The other thing is I changed my Etsy shop, my tool and stencil shop. I changed the name to the Dot Art Depot. How cool, right? I love it. It's so fitting. I just think it was cute. Um, so I changed the name. All the links that you find in any of the old videos or whatever with the old DottieMandolly.com, um, those will all still work. Um, so nothing too much to worry about there, but I just wanted to announce that that is the new name. If you see that, that's me. <laughs> So, I know that we're all out in our gardens now, so by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to make your very own stepping stone. <laughs> it is heavy. It says, welcome, and it's got some beautiful flowers on it. And, oh, so that's how it looks. Huh. I will show that in better shots throughout the video, but ugh, it's heavy. It's awesome, I love it, it's beautiful. The resin really turned out really well for this project. So if you want to find out how to go about making something like this for your garden, then go grab your paints and let's get started. So I went to, um, I think it was Home Depot, just any home improvement store will have pavers and stepping stones. Um, some of these were really nice and this one was really smooth but it had some bumps like little waves on it so i didn't think that was going to work and then you know they're all pretty reasonably priced a uh, buck and a half or two bucks something like that this one was really nice it was really flat but it was red and then this one was really nice but it was a little too big girls say hi 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 and then I found this one. Now, this is the one that I finally did go with. Um, I liked the back of it. It was nice and smooth. Um, and the front was, was nice as well. Um, I would suggest using a Lazy Susan if you have one. These are the tools that I use in today's tutorial. And these are the paints that I use. Sorry, my bottles have paint all over them. They are well used and well loved. So I just kind of started off. Uh, cleaning the paver now you don't want to get it wet um, it would just take way too long for it to dry I mean if you have plenty of time uh, before you start your project then go ahead and wash it but I was okay with just using a really hard um, wire brush to get all of the loose particles and any of the dirt off of it all right, so I have some plaster of Paris um, that I'm trying to use up because I don't really feel comfortable making, um, you know, like fake stones or anything out of it. Um, so I'm going to use it to smooth out the um, the paver here, the stepping stone. So I just went, you know, heavy with it and spread it on really good and tried to get it down in any of the cracks. And then I took off all of the excess with just a popsicle stick and I scraped it off back into my cup, any of the excess, just so it's nice and smooth. And then once it's dry, we'll come back in and sand it, and hopefully that will take care of anything that was left. So I somehow deleted the part where I sanded it, but anyway, I sanded it off with just some um, 
just regular sandpaper and just used it in my hand and just kind of went over it. It did leave a few lines, but that didn't bother me at all. And I went on and painted it with the uh, patio paint, the outdoor deco art patio paint, and this is called the wrought iron black. Um, and again, you can use any color that you like. I just choose black because it typically makes the colors pop, and I like that. Now I'm going to be putting um, a few flowers on this, so I'm not going to measure anything out. I don't need a stencil today, but um, we're just going to eyeball it. I would say really the only thing you got to keep in mind here is the um, width of the flowers. So I measured them and they're about four inches um, from end to end. And we're going to have one on one side and one on the other. So make sure you leave a little bit of a space in between the two flowers. Um, but just kind of imagine that it's a four inch flower uh, and there's two of the big ones. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with the green dotting tool. And then um, for the paint, it's going to be DecoArt Americana Gloss Enamel Paint, and the color is called Tuscan Red, and it's just a really nice, deep, rich red. I thought it was very fitting. So um, kind of eyeball, so from the corner to corner diagonally, and um, it wouldn't be on the center line there. It's going to be a little bit above it. And we're focusing on the bottom left hand side of the paper here. And just imagine a four inch flower around there. If you want to pull out your ruler and stick your dot, you know, where the two inch mark is, and then just kind of eyeball, there's the four. You can go over to the eight, which would be another four, and then just slide your ruler over a little bit, and that way the flowers will have a little bit of a space in between them. And then go ahead and dot right above the six on your ruler. And that'll be the placement for your two largest flowers. And then the rest, you can pretty much work around that. Now, it's uh, with this green tool, you just put your center dot on. And then I'm just going to be dotting all the way around that center dot. So there's a total of six right around that center dot. I'm trying to pick up the paver so you can get the best view of, of this uh, as I go here. All right, so just put one on just you know choose any side you want and put one and then set one right next to it you don't want any of them overlapping you just want them right next to each other and you want them to be as close to that center dot as possible so you'll have six will fit perfectly right around that center dot do the same with the other flower and that's sticking with that same green tool and with my color coded set of dotting tools you can kind of just um, keep track of what I'm using by uh, just looking. Um, but uh, this is where the Lazy Susan comes into play. It works great with this paver, at least mine does. It's a larger Lazy Susan and it fits right underneath that paver. Nice and snug and it's so great because you can rotate it and it's <laughs> so much easier than trying to rotate a big old stepping stone. Alright, so as you see, the next um, color of dowel that I'm going to use is my yellow tool. And you're just going to put a dot right in between um, each of the dots there all the way around. So there's going to be a total of six. And they just fit right down in between each of the little previous row of dots. I'm trying to adjust the lighting here. Um, to best get, you know, a good angle for for the viewer. Um, so you have to excuse if the lighting looks like it jumps around a little bit. All right, so for the tools, I just want to use a damp cloth and just kind of rub it, not too hard, but just kind of lightly rub the paint off. And then if you choose to, you don't have to do this, but I wanted to make sure they were good and smooth. So um, you can just take a, one of your nail stylus. Now I'm using my size five, which is my largest ball stylus. And I'm just kind of rotating, um, spinning out the paint and just kind of smoothing it out. It does seem to look a little better because um, I knew I was going to layer it and I didn't want it to be um, real bumpy for the next row of paint. 
but that's up to you. You can leave it. And I did experiment with leaving it bumpy just on purpose, and it was kind of cool actually. So you could try it either way, maybe on something before you start on your paper. Just see what you like. So the next tool is my orange tool. And it's the same process here. So we're just going to go ahead and put a dot right in between each little set of dots there all the way around. And just spin it as you go. And then do the same thing with both of the different flowers there. Alright, so the next tool is going to be the big large red tool and we're just going to do the same process again. So we're just going to put a dot right down in between each of the previous row of dots. And then go ahead and feel free to swirl out that paint if you want it nice and flat. Right, next up, I'm going to be going back to the green tool. And I'm going to be putting two dots in between each of those larger outer dots. So just stick them right next to each other all the way around and do the same thing with the other flower. All right, I'm going to kind of place on my welcome stencil um, or wherever you're going to write the word welcome. Just kind of keep in mind that space there and keep in mind the space you have for um, a smaller flower. Make sure that it'll fit down in, the, in between there. And I'm going to stick one flower up in between the top, um, just a little off center of the middle of the flowers, and then I'm going to do one in the bottom as well. And then lots down at the bottom. So just kind of keep in mind where you plan on writing the word welcome or whatever you're going to write your message. You could write like my garden or, or anything like that. So I'm going to use my pink tool. And I'm going to go ahead and start, and again, remember to leave ample room on all sides of the flower uh, as well, so it doesn't run into the other flower. And it's just the same thing, same process as the large flower. So just go ahead and put your center dot on, and then make your dots all around it. It will equal to six, just like the last one. And then I'm smoothing them out with my nail. The next size tool is the silver tool. And it's exactly the same. Just go ahead and stick a dot right in between each of the previous row all the way around. And do that with both the top, the upper little flower, and the, the bottom little flower. And for the next size, I'm going to use my purple tool. And I do list all of the sizes of my tools. If you don't have my set, I do list the, uh, the sizes in the listing itself on my Etsy page. So um, that way people that don't have my set can still follow along. And the next size tool is going to be my yellow tool. And that'll stick right down in between the previous row. I tried to get a better angle. I was I kept adjusting my lighting and my camera because I wasn't working on my normal desk. I was working on a small little table that I pulled out because it was a paver and it was huge and it was heavy and it just it didn't work on my desk. So I was like, I, this was totally improvising here. <laughs> so you have to excuse the uh, uh, jumping around a little bit here and there. All right, and to fill in the gap between the larger dots there on this flower and just to kind of um, soften the edges. I am going to put two smaller dots with my blue tool right in between each of the larger dots around that outer edge and just do that same thing to both of them. And while I had my blue tool out, I decided to go ahead and stick another small dot on the outer edge of the two dots that we put in between the larger dots on the Largest flowers? Wow, that was, <laughs> I hope you got that. You'll see when I zoom out. But yeah, so I just added a little tiny bit more uh, on the previous flowers. And I do it to the small flowers as well. So just add one little extra dot. 
if you want. You don't have to. It's yours. You make it your own, however you like it. All right, so I've zoomed out so you can see the overall picture here. And I just waited for everything to dry because the next step is going to be um, top dotting. I'm going to start some top dots here. So just make sure it's really good and dry. Give it ample time to dry. Um, and then you're ready to move on. All right, so the next uh, brand of paint I'm using is Folk Art brand. It's a multi-surface paint, and the color is called Magenta. Now, I absolutely love this paint. The color is brilliant. It's beautiful. It's rich. It's thick. It's wonderful. I love it. I wish I could find this brilliant Magenta um, in other brands, but so far I've not been so lucky. This one is perfect for this project. So that's what I'm using. I'm using my silver tool, and this is going to be for all of the smallest dots on the larger flowers. And you just want to put the dot offset. You don't necessarily want it in the center. You just kind of want to pull it towards the center dot. So the edge closest to the center dot is where you're going to uh, dot it. And the it, it works for the... Um, the second or third ring out of the smaller flowers as well. It's the same size tool. And you do it to each of the ones. Again, just kind of aim it right towards the center dot. So that edge, hugging that edge. You just want like a little bit of a crescent moon behind the pink. So you just want a little bit of the red showing. And then we're going to layer it again as well. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and top dot all of this, and then you got to let it dry really good before you move on. So for the next step, go ahead and grab your green dotting tool. And this is for the next row out of the larger um, flowers. And again, just kind of going right towards the center. So hug that, that inner edge there. And for the smaller flowers, it's the larger dots on the outer edge of those. The next tool is the yellow tool. And it's for the next row out. And then for the next row out after that one is the orange tool. And you always want to make sure you get your large tools or any of your tools good and covered. I know it's sometimes easy to um, accidentally not, you know, get it all the way covered on the larger tools. But that is really important to getting a good um, round symmetrical dot. like to push the paint around a little bit with the edge of my tool that's you know that's totally legal <laughs> you're allowed to do that so for the um, the next row in on the small flowers I'm using the uh, blue tool and then I'm going to go with the white tool for all the really really small dots and I just leave the center dot alone on all the flowers I just leave it alone that's up to you. It's personal preference. It's just what I do. All right, so I did make sure the paint was really good and dry. Again, I swirled out that paint just to make it nice and flat for the next layer of the top dots. And now I'm going to go back with the red, that same initial red color. Starting off the next row with the blue tool. Um, I did just want to mention though, um, if you would leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know if you would be interested in seeing me maybe vlog the whole experience of Summer Fair. I think it might be valuable to those who um, are looking to do, you know, to start doing art fairs. I've learned a whole lot about, you know, how to go about them. Um, things that I really hadn't even considered before I had applied. I had applied seriously on a whim, did not think I would be chosen. 
Um, and I didn't realize how big of a deal they are until after the fact, you know, I got chosen and then um, I realized, um, you know, as I did started doing more research about it, that these are, you know, a big deal and there's a lot involved um, and there's a lot that you have to buy and, and prep for it. So uh, I think it could be beneficial for, for some people. So I might do that, but if it's something that you would be interested in seeing, definitely leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know if that would be something that you would be interested in seeing on my channel. The closer that the art fair gets, the more excited I get, and I am definitely a little nervous, like I said uh, at the beginning here. Um, I don't know if I have enough art, <laughs> you know, like I've been... Um, that was one of the reasons I haven't been trying to put out so many tutorials and focusing on tutorials right now because I have so much that I feel like I need to get done for this art fair. So if you don't see me for a couple more weeks it's because I'm prepping for the art fair and as soon as it's over I'll get back to my normal schedule but right now I am kind of freaking out definitely panicking a little bit <laughs> every time I realize I don't have a whole lot I mean I don't make I don't make you know two of the same paintings ever like all of my stuff is just one of a kind and I don't I've never painted uh, with the um, with the idea of cash or money, you know, or profit in mind. It was just, it's just something that I enjoy doing. So I just do it, you know, whenever I have a free, you know, free moment or a free couple hours to do it. And um, it's a nice way to wind down and so forth and so on. But um, yeah, so this right now, like making art solely for, you know, the potential of sales is just, uh, I don't know it's just different for me so I have been focusing on painting 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 all right so speaking of painting let's get back to the painting um I just kind of just drew on some little uh, stems for the flowers just kind of curved them slightly no particular anything uh, nothing fancy there's no no stencil or template to go on just kind of do what you like, what you think looks good for a stem. And then I'm just going to dot it very small uh, for the first row with a lighter green paint. And then I will um, paint another row next to the uh, smaller row. Right, so this part is fun uh, for those of you who like to make little swipes. I'm using a very small uh, nail stylus, so it's about a size two. All right, so basically you just, just like you would dot, you dip your tool, stick it down, and then just push it out. And you can go out as far as you want. You run out of paint at some point, so um, you'll have to re-dip your tool, go back to the starting point, and then swipe again if you want to make it a little longer. I have been meaning to make a little demo of how to swipe um, because I know it can be difficult at times. So at this point I wanted to make the stem a little thicker so I am adding on um, another row of darker green dots right next to the lighter green dots with the same white tool is the second to smallest tool in my set and just do that to each of the little stems there and you can make it again however you want it so if you want to add a third row you can I left it at two but yeah you can do whatever you want there All right, so I'm gonna use my welcome stencil and I'm, I've got it it's nice and curved to go right around the flower and right in the corner of the stepping stone so I'm gonna just kind of adjust it and play with it, see where I want it. And then I'm using my um, my slate chalk pencil to 
outline the letters. And in the thinner areas of the letters, it, you know, it can be hard to fit the pencil down into, so I use the really super thin edge of the opposite end of the pencil. My point is kind of gone away as well here, but um, yeah, so just go ahead and just like you would with any other stencil, just go ahead and chalk it out. And so we've got it on there. And now I want to talk about this just a little bit here. This is called Liquid Leaf. It's super duper um, metallic. It's like the epitome of metallic paint. It's really, really thin, like water though. And it is kind of hard to work with. And also it is extremely strong smelling. So if you have a sensitivity to, you know, smells, then go ahead and just grab a regular gold acrylic paint. It would work just as well. I just do like this paint and I try to use it and I've been wanting to incorporate it into a tutorial. It's awesome, but seriously, wear a mask. I am wearing a breathing mask here. Um, it is way too strong of fumes to do uh, without a mask and or uh, indoors. I would say go ahead and do this part outdoors if you can or open a window and open the doors and let some air come through and circulate. It's that strong, but it's so pretty. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, so if you don't have this, just use what you've got for the gold. It will be just as fine. But I did want to show this product to you guys as it's very cool. I will use it again in an another tutorial coming up. So I'm just going to outline the letters and I put the thicker part of the letter is where I will stick the dotting tool down. I'm just using a nail stylus and um, because it kind of, it'll just leave a drop wherever you stick it. And then I'm just kind of pulling it out and just like you would with a swipe, you know, a little, um, you yeah, have the little swipes or whatever. So yeah, just like that. And then just fill it in and it does dry really quick. It's, I think it's alcohol based. So it just dries up, uh, which is, it's cool. It's fine, but it's so strong. It gave me a headache. I had to leave the room even with a mask on, <laughs> but yeah. You'll see if you have it or if you, uh, if you try it out, definitely get you some good air circulation around. All right, so I decided to do a fourth top dot right in the center of each of the little red dots there that we did with the gold. Now, again, it is very liquidy. It's just like water as far as uh, the viscosity of it. And it can be sloppy. Um, I couldn't really get a very good consistent size dot. I mean, it dots and it, you know, it can be round, um, but the sizes varied. Um, I think it was depending on how far in you want to, you know, you stick the stylus and how much liquid it pulls up. But I just love it and I wanted to try it. So, and I love the way it turns out. It's beautiful, even if it is a little, um, you know, it's not perfect. It's all right. But yeah, they look like little gold BBs. <laughs> They're, it's just, it's awesome. It's, it's really awesome paint. Actually, if you have a tip for me on how to best, you know, get uh, an even, you know, size of dot, why don't you leave me a comment in the comment section below you maybe, you know, have used this liquid leaf stuff, you know, a lot more than I have. I have no idea. So if you do have any tips for me, then yeah, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know. I love getting tips. I love tips. We all love tips. I'm still learning all kinds of things and I love it. Hey, we're all a work in progress, aren't we? Oh, I love this. Uh, my boyfriend um, was you know, sitting with me and I was telling him how I have to make a tutorial. I was like, I have to start focusing on a tutorial. It's been a couple weeks and I, I really hate to leave everyone hanging for that long. I've been just, you know, focusing on, on this fair. And I love what he said. He said, he said, exchange the word, um, have to with get, get to. And I was like, oh my gosh, I absolutely love that. That is 
just one of the best things I'd heard in a while. So I am so appreciative of my channel and my 35,000 subscribers. I can't believe that I have that many. It's crazy. Thank you all so much. You mean the world to me. You really do. I love painting and this just gives me so much more purpose. And I just love it. And I love you all so much. So I get to focus on a tutorial, you know, and it is so true. I've got a, a great thing going here. So, oh, um, I did try to take off the paint with a Q-tip and it just doesn't work. I don't know if that's possible with maybe with like a certain, I just left it dry. I didn't, I didn't really know what to do. I didn't dampen it, but it didn't really work. But again, I just kept going with it. So it's still pretty. And you can leave off this step of gold if you want, if it's not your thing, if you like the flowers the way they are. And also, you know, you can do the flowers in all kinds of different colors. I just thought that red would be nice in the green grass, you know, in a garden or uh, by the garden. So that's why I chose these colors, but. Oh, all right, we've got, this is fully dried and um, I'm gonna move on with the small little flowers to accent the bottom. And so I'm gonna go back with the red and the pink and I'm gonna use my pink tool for, for all of them, for all of this whole process here. So you just wanna start with little center dots here and there and just dot all the way around that center dot. It's gonna be six little petals. So a center dot and six little petals all over. Just put them in any random spot that you want them. And I just, you know, alternate between red and pink and just fill it in how it seems fitting. So grab your very small nail stylus and just put random little petals on these flowers. I'm using the lighter green, but you could use either or. More. And you just want to dip it in your paint and then push down as if you're going to make a dot, but just hold it down and just swipe it out. Just push it out whatever direction you want it to go in. You can do one or two. I'm doing just random. All right, so here is a close-up of the stepping stone, uh, the paint job here. Now it does look a little bumpy, but you don't see any of that really anymore once you pour on the resin. I am going to resin this stone because it's going to be outdoors and I do want it to last. Um, so I waited for it to be completely dry and you may want to wait um, I think you can wait up to like a month is what they suggest, but I didn't wait a month. I waited about uh, three, four days. And you do want to make sure that your surface is level. So I just got out a level and uh, just make sure your little bubbles in the middle and you just go both ways, you know, turn it from one way to the other. And I'm using the uh, Pro Marine resin. I, um, I just found that it was, you know, supposedly uh, non-yellowing. And I'm just going to use some disposable cups and a, uh, a popsicle stick. And I'm just going to fill them up to the very bottom line, just so I know that it's nice and even, because it's really important to get your, uh, your amounts really precise for resin. I know that's a thing. Um, and again, another very important thing, at least with the Pro Resin now, this is the only kind that I've ever used because I bought it by the liter or by the gallon, it was like two parts, but altogether it makes a gallon and it has lasted me forever. But anyway, it is so strong. Do definitely wear a mask. And uh, if you can open the windows and doors, go ahead and do that as well. I definitely suggest, you know, airing out your space. Um, I would suspect that it's any resin. I don't know, I could be wrong, but for sure, this Pro Marine one, it is strong, strong smelling stuff. You don't want to hurt your lungs or anything, just, you know, being creative. You can, you can do it in a safe way. Definitely wear a good quality mask and open up your windows, your doors. 
So you just pretty much pour the resin in the middle and then you don't really want to push the resin off the sides because that's just going to waste it. You, you want to like smooth it up to the sides uh, and let it just kind of run over on its own. And then, you know, just kind of uh, rub your rub your, your foam brush on the sides, you know, just so that they are damp. It would be just like a, a paint pour, really. Um, same type of, of deal there. So yeah, just, you know, get every, get all the surface wet and then, you know, basically just let it run over on its own uh, and just keep it pretty smooth. And then the air bubbles, I do use a blowtorch for those it seems to work the best that I have found for removing the bubbles and like right there you can see all the white that will all be gone and this turns out absolutely beautifully I think this is one of the most beautiful projects that I've been able to make so far I love it love 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 it look at that isn't that absolutely awesome love it <laughs> it's so cool gone I'm trying to zoom in a little bit there you can see a little bit of white on the flower and then it's just gone all right so here it is and it looks like glass I mean it's beautiful I do love resin I don't use it a whole lot but boy is it a treat when I do be really really careful with this stuff though guys seriously and make sure you give it ample time to dry and cure at least 24 hours before you can touch it and then you can just kind of cut off the edges and clean them up and you're good to go all right and there's the finished piece it's all dried and cured i've got it out in the green grass just to kind of see and boy do those colors just pop hey thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you'd enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And of course, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you real soon. Bye now. Now for some bloopers. <laughs> Let me go get my Pablo baby. Come here. <laughs> I see the lines do Do you see that? Let's see if I can get the stop. Hmm. There, it stopped. All right. Um fair fair? Fur fur. Made this. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>